This is the moment cops realized there was a head in the bucket at the crime scene. But little did they know, the entire case would only get more and more horrifying. On the 23rd of February, 2023, police visited the apartment of a suspected killer, Taylor, Taylor Shabiznes. Shabiznes. This is That's where they would quickly name. find out wow. that she's not only insane, but a complete psychopath. Oh. Hey, is this blood? Does this one have blood to you? Or am I just tripping? Could possibly be blood. Hey, who did that? Huh? Hold on, what's up? Hi. Hi, Taylor, how's it going? Officer Russell with the Green Bay Police Department. Taylor, you have a warrant for your arrest. Just put your hands together back with you. You got blood on your hands here, blood on your hands. The Taylor, cops the were searching Taylor's property on a Hold warrant on. and discovered bloody footprints next to her car and blood literally on her hands. But upon searching her apartment, they found the very thing they had been called to find in the first place. A human head in a bucket first discovered by the victim's own mother. Oh the police God. wasted no time in getting her into custody, where one of the most chilling interrogations of all time would begin. I hate this fucking outfit. Well, a few of our... Hold on, bro. ...dispatch to uh, address on Stonybrook, the parents of Shad Therian. Do you know Shad? I know I'm being Shad. He's my ex. He's your ex. Boyfriend. Okay. Well, they found a kind of disturbing stuff at the house there. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of blood, basically Shad's head. It's immediately obvious how stone-faced and cold Taylor is being. She's showing absolutely no emotion about anything, including the goriest details of the case. Yeah. Only managing to mutter, that's fucked up, in regards to the severed head. Often, psychopaths like to talk up their own crimes as it gives them a sense of self-gratification, but we haven't even begun to see exactly how insane she is. Okay. Where's the rest Let's of see what body? she's got then, huh? It's there. It's at the house. It is in the house? It is at the house. Yeah. It's... Can you tell me what happened? It's a good question, because I blacked out during that time. Were, um, you two being blacked out? It was getting there. Wait, getting there. what? Okay. Wait, they did what? Wait, 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 talk to me. You two being intimate? You, you two being intimate, having sex? Okay. It was getting there. Oh, they're about to fuck? Okay. And then so what happened? You consider foreplay? Yeah. Chopping off somebody's head is foreplay? Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. I mean, it works. <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah. You guys done something like this in the past? Do you use manual strangulation during sex at all? A manual strangulation? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Taylor claims that she and Shad were being intimate that night and she'd uh -huh. used a dog chain to choke him. Uh -huh. But apparently this wasn't unusual for them. But that evening, she just didn't stop until oh. he was almost dead. Oh my god. She also mentions that she'd been smoking meth that night. Oh. Something that definitely could have contributed to the horrifying events that followed. Who is your there. Why did you cut it off? So we're going to take the head somewhere? I like that. I liked the head. I liked the fucking head is madness. What? What? So you dismembered the body too? Yeah. Well, what did you do with the body parts? Oh, they're, um, they're in the house. Someone? They're like, um, yeah. yeah. Basement, upstairs, yeah, downstairs? Absolutely in the basement. I'll be down And then, um, I know I forgot the head. I wanted the head. Did you bring anything with you? It's in the van. She's wildin'. It turns out that Taylor had not only choked out and beheaded Shad, but also dismembered multiple parts of his body and hidden them throughout the apartment. Just this thought alone is grim. But yeah. exactly how is another story entirely. How did you dismember his body then? Talk to me. Nice. Oh, what? Oh. 
knives, 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 knives. Knives? Just more than one knife? More than one. Kitchen. Do you want sharp? No, no. It was alright. Bread oh. knife works good. What? Bread knife? A bread, bread knife works good, yeah. What? I was uh, all so like, yeah. I got lazy last night, so. Once Shad was dead, Taylor sawed off his limbs with a blunt bread knife and tossed each into. What? Nigga, I'm hurting listening to this. A bread knife? That sounds so painful, bro. It's got those ridges on it and shit. You're wild. Individual piece of his body into a black bag the police later found in the basement. But somehow, the most shocking part of Fuck. all of this is how casually she's talking about it. It's almost as if she doesn't see anything. You gotta like saw through that bitch pretty much, bro. With the fucking bread knife? Like, uh, you just gotta be sitting there sawing through that bitch for a little minute, dog. Fuck. What's wrong with what she's done? Psychopathic murderers often take pride in their work and enjoy the attention that it brings them. Ted Bundy, for example, was constantly delighted to speak to the press for likely the same reason Taylor is laughing about what she did. Narcissism. Taylor is saying that this was an accident, but the joy she's getting out of explaining every tiny detail to the detective implies that while she maybe didn't plan it, she certainly had no issues with what she did. For the next five minutes, Taylor describes how she cuddled with his body after killing him and how she used parts of his dismembered body, specifically his genitals. We pick the interview back up as she continues to bluntly describe... Nigga, what are we watching? What? Taylor, what the fuck? Taylor, what the fuck? Are you good? This is insanity right now. This is beyond insane, dog. What are we watching? Hold on, hold on. I have the chilling events of that night. You do anything particular with the head or the body? What would you do with the blood? We're having all the fun. It's, it's still on there, still on the top. There's a shower in the basement. You go in the next level and I just dump it out the rain. It's probably so good. What are you doing? Yeah, that, well, I drained his head. Artery off. Well, like, after I saw him blood, I put it in the bucket, but then there's still blood in this bucket, so it's coming out of my head. Should have took the brains and I'm going to do So you cleaned his head in the shower and then dumped the bucket? Yeah. Oh. Not only is Taylor comfortable with dismembering and beheading her former lover, yeah. but it seems she was also fine with draining and washing his head, and possibly even removing his brain. Okay. It's unclear why she felt the need to do this yeah, right now, what the as fuck? things really aren't what? adding up. Well, she was about to experiment on his brain. Maybe she's a scientist. Have you ever seen um the Human Centipede? Don't watch it. I, I shouldn't even have said it. Oh my. Yeah, don't watch it. Actually, yeah, don't watch that, bro. That is a trauma movie. I, I that is a, one. Of, that is traumatic. Yeah, don't watch it, bro. It's a, but it's crazy. Yeah, you shouldn't even have said that. It's crazy. It's crazy. It just no, it's crazy. She had already discarded and hidden the rest of the body, so if she was attempting to hide it, then she would want to dispose of the head too. There is something my bad. much <laughs> deeper at play my here. My bad. The detective is desperate to figure out what. So when he, when he put the chain on his neck, he thought that you guys were going to have kinky sex. Thank you. Do you think that's what Chad was thinking, maybe? Yeah. What were you thinking? I was going to do the same thing. Yeah. You know, I was going in, and I did. And I went in. But then he was like, choke me. But he didn't really say it. So I'm like, he put it on his neck. I already know I'm going to choke him. And I did. But before you chain went around his neck, were you and Chad like kissing or any foreplay or anything? No, we were chilling at home. You just chilling. So all of a sudden, the, the chain went around his neck? Uh-huh. How come? I'm just trying to, to get it. He likes it. All right. So, and I was going to walk him like a dog. You know, wow. And he wanted that? I have no idea what I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> okay. And you claim it was his idea. Hold on, bro. No, it was his idea. It was all him. All right, so yeah. you're on the bed. The chain goes around his neck and you start choking him. And you just realize that he was going to die or what? I'm just like, shit. 
shit. I think I went a little too far because like, like I, I was blacking out while I was doing it, right? And then I like, thought, oh. um, like, I look at him, I'm like, shit, he's already purple, I'm like, fuck, I'm, at, I'm like, I don't know if he's fucking, is he good, is he good? But then like when I woke up, like, you know, while, like, during the black, I'm like, shit. I didn't mean for all this to happen, and I'm like, I fucked up, I know I fucked up, I'm like, shit. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, shit. This is the closest Taylor has come to remorse in the entire interrogation, but it's so heavily undermined by everything else she it said. It's definitely an accident because she don't sound like she's lying. Genuine. It's likely that she's only saying this because she knows that showing some remorse could help her defense and get her a lighter sentence. In fact, throughout the entire interrogation, it seems as though. Crazy is an understatement, Snowy. This is beyond crazy, bro. I, this is beyond. But, like, it was an accident. The kill was an accident. So, like, she didn't mean to kill him. Like, I think, like, I don't know. Maybe she got nervous. She was like, the only thing I could do is hide the body, right? Like, fuck. Like, I don't want to get locked up for this. So she's like, fuck it. I got to do what I got to do, you know? So she's been attempting to do this very thing. Taylor's story is that she got home with Shad and almost immediately grabs the chain and started choking him. Then she suddenly blacked out, saw him dead in front of her, and despite not wanting him to be dead, didn't call an ambulance and instead dismembered him, played with his body, oh. and then laughed about it with police. These don't sound like the actions of an innocent person, and the detectives don't think so either. The case was brought to trial almost immediately, where Taylor would continue to show just how insane she really is. Take a look at her demeanor as Shad's best friend testified in front of court. When I got there, I was, we were just chilling, uh -huh. chopping it up, like how we always do. And uh -huh. uh, basically, um, I was like, she's laughing. Taylor was thinking, asking like, do you wanna, do you wanna hang out with Shad? She was asking me for consent to hang out with Shad, to, like to bring him over. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. That's cool. What? This behavior continued for the entire trial. She's so laughing. Far, as she smiled, what smirked, the fuck? and laughed her way through the whole thing. But it seems that this didn't give the jury a great impression of her as she found out when the verdict was cast. Okay. <clears throat> first verdict reads as follows. We, the jury, find the defendant, Taylor Denise Shabiznis, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in count one of the information. Dated this date, July 26, 2023, signed by the foreperson. Taylor Shabiznis was convicted of first-degree murder, mutilating a corpse, and sexual assault. As of this video's upload, she's awaiting her sentence but is facing life Jesus in prison Christ. or even the death sentence. If you enjoy true crime videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to see more.